Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to write a formula so that you can determine which quarter a calendar year fits into. Now, this is similar to my previous lesson where I worked with the fiscal year. A viewer wanted to know how to determine which fiscal quarter a specific date fell into. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with the, either the roundup function or the ceiling function. We're going to be nesting the month function divided by three inside either the roundup or the ceiling function. As I did in the previous lesson, when I'm working with nested formulas, in other words, nesting one formula or one function inside of another, in order to understand it, I like to work from the inside out. So we're going to be nesting the month function divided by 3. Let's see how the month function operates. Equals month, and I'll use tab. And what I want to do is point over here to the cell that contains a date. You'll see that the month function requires only one argument. And what it's going to do is it's going to extract the number for the month from a date. So here, the month function is extracting the number 12. 12 is the 12th month for that date. Here, the month function is extracting 9. September is the ninth month in this date. All right, now, the second part of this is divide by 3. And the reason that we're going to divide by 3 is remember that quarters are made up of a series of 3. So 3 months in each quarter. And as you copy that down, you'll see that you have thirds and two thirds, and then the complete whole number for the quarter. All right, now let's use the roundup function. Let's pull this together. Equals roundup. And in this case, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pointing over here to the result of the month function, and then I want to divide that by three. Now, the second argument is the number of digits. I want a whole number, so I'm going to put in there zero digits. And now you see that as I copy this all the way down, I see that January, the first month, February, the second month, March, the third month, belong in the first quarter for the calendar year. April, May, and June belong in the second quarter. Now, the ceiling function will give us the same result, equal ceiling. And what we want to do is, again, point to the number, which is the result of the month function, divided by 3. And in this case, significance will be 1. With the ceiling function, we're rounding away from 0. So double click for autofill, and we have exactly the same results. All right, now let me switch back and add a little something extra here. I'm going to do the roundup function, but I'm also going to show you how you can change the formatting of the month to make it much easier for you to do subtotals or other reporting. So equals roundup. And what I want to do is I want to have the month function. And I'm going to point to the cell. And what I want to do is I want to have the month function divided by 3. For the second argument, the number of uh, digits is going to be 0. I want a complete whole number. And I'll, again, double click to move that down. Now, let's change the formatting so it will actually read quarter 1 and remain as a number. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control plus 1 to bring up the function arguments dialog box. I want to come down here into Custom. And over here, I want to type in double quotation mark, quarter, space, double quotation mark, and zero is the shorthand code for a number placement. I click OK, and there you go. So you see, it still aligns to the right. I use that custom formatting. Let me bring that up again. Control plus one. So I put in the text that I wanted, quarter, space, inside double quotation marks. And then I use 0 as the placeholder for an integer. And there you go. So now you've learned how that you can convert um, a calendar date into a calendar year quarter. And in the previous lesson, how to convert it into a fiscal year quarter. 
Now, this is one of the many tips that I offer in my instructional DVDs, and I hope you'll pay a visit to my online shop, and I'll look for you in the next lesson.